Fox T Server Control provides centralized administration and automated enforcement of granular access policies, including multi-factor authentication and authorization across Windows, Unix, Linux servers, both physical and virtual. In addition, the solution automatically consolidates user activity logs and settings from across these disparate servers to streamline audit and compliance reporting. In this first video, we will see how to set up a new user, assign them to a host group, and then types of authorization rules you can define. As well, you will see how you can quickly remove or revoke a user's access rights from across multiple servers. Let's start with logging into FoxD Control Center. We'll uh, list the uh, available users in the system. This will give us a list of all the accounts available in the FoxD server control environment. Then go to add a user into the system. Type in the the username of the user. You can click the little search icon to um, list host groups available. And then we um, go and select the primary user class. We also get a list of available user classes. This is an Unix administrator, so we'll select the Unix admin group. Um, same uh, is selected for the primary Unix group in the system we'll make sure that this user gets a home directory and that it's created uh, at the time the user is provisioned and we'll select a password for the user hit save and the user is saved into the system so if we now go to list users you can see that the user Jonas is available in the system we can click that user and look at some basic data for for this user. If we now switch to another system, log in with this newly created uh, user Jonas, we see that he's authenticated as a Fox T Server Control user and is logged into this uh, Red Hat system. So. This Red Hat system is a part of the Unix group and this user Jonas is provisioned out to all the um, servers available and grouped into the uh, Unix servers host group and therefore this account is provisioned out to the Unix servers. Now we can go into Foxy Control Center here and manually block this user we then switch back to the same system and try to log in with uh, Jonas. You can see here that the system administrator has disabled the account. So uh, immediately it takes effect that um, a user account is, is manually blocked throughout the environment. And the opposite way, if we manually unblock the user again, we are able to uh, log into the system again. So as you can see, this uh, blocking and unblocking and provisioning of users, for example, takes effect instantly on, on the system. Now if we go in and look at some more details for this user, we can go in and check the access routes available to this user. Now, this user has inherited a couple of access routes um, from the um, user class that it's a member of. Um, so these are the access routes that we have available to us. Um, different methods, source, and destinations. But let's look at adding an access route and what that looks like. Uh, this is the specific configuration for adding uh, an access route that has to do with SSH. So if we, for example, want to control how Jonas can access Unix servers within the Unix servers group, um, we can um, specifically configure um, sub on a sub protocol level so let's for example remove SSH x11 access to this to these servers that access route is added to the system 
Um, another interesting thing here is we can control um, SUXEC, it's uh, the Fox T sudo replacement tool and as you can see here in the list we can actually enable keystroke logging um, for SUXS sessions.